Here comes Jimbo Fisher and the seventh ranked Texas A&M Aggies for an early kick here in College Station. The brunch food has been completed. Full bellies, full hearts here in College Station. All the pageantry that makes this town so special. Reveille's ready to go, so are we. And so are all the servicemen and women here in College Station, Texas. It's SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. Here come the New Mexico Lobos playing Texas A&M for a fifth time. Tell you about a familiar face at quarterback in just a moment. Going up against the home team, the Texas A&M Aggies onto the field on a Saturday. With Matt Stinchcomb, the College Football Hall of Famer, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Alyssa Lang is on the field. You'll see her in just a second. Stinch is a third straight non-conference game for the Aggies to start the season. And then next week, it's the first of seven straight conference games. Yeah, and already tested early this season in non-conference. Last week, a near miss going out of conference versus Colorado. And then you get right back into that SEC schedule. Everybody kind of fast forwarded to October 9th versus Alabama. But all of a sudden, after the big victory over Texas last week by Arkansas, September 25th looms large. It's a rivalry, obviously, that A&M has largely dominated. But all of a sudden, that game has got a lot more teeth in it because of what transpired last week. Yeah, the meat of the schedule is going to be difficult no matter who's playing quarterback. Haynes King, the quarterback for the Aggies, broke his tibia last week. Zach Calzada is in and he saved the day in the fourth quarter. He really did, but thrust into service, and it looked really choppy when he first entered into the offense. The rest of the guys on that unit, they had to step up their play. It didn't happen, and Zach Calzada, who you could tell was amped up. The adrenaline was flowing. The kid's got a strong arm. The passes just were not connecting, and the offense was out of sync. The run game has to really emerge. The offensive front has to play better to help them out because in the fourth quarter, Calzada had to pull out some heroics not only as a passer, but also as a thrower. The go-ahead touchdown to Isaiah Piller. You can see the difference in the start and the finish. 10 of his first 24, but he completed eight of his final 14, and that was the difference in the game. So he's been the starter all week. How is he handling the first team reps? Let's go down to Alyssa. Yeah, guys, I caught up with tight end Jalen Weidermeyer this week, close friends with Zach Calzada. He said the mentality change this week has been beyond noticeable. He knows he's the starter now. He knows he's responsible for leading this football team. Not only has he been more vocal, he's also been leaning on some of those veteran leaders. When it comes to his skill set, Weidermeyer described him as a great bullet passer. And guys, we were down here during warm-ups watching them go through some of those warm-up drills. And there's a zip on some of those passes from Calzada. These receivers really excited to catch some of those today. We will have to wait a minute to see Mr. Calzada because New Mexico won the toss and will receive. So A&M will kick things off with Caden Davis kicking it deep to Chad Alexander. This is the fifth meeting between the two teams. A&M won the first four. They'll play again in 2023 and 2027. What an atmosphere for an 11 a.m. kick. And a familiar face is coming onto the field for New Mexico. It's former Kentucky quarterback Terry Wilson, who was here three years ago when the Wildcats lost to the Aggies in overtime. It's a game that went down to the wire. Wilson only threw for just over 100 yards in that game and did run around quite a bit as well. Started his career at Oregon, three years at Kentucky, and now the head, now the quarterback of the Lobos, the senior from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And on the first play, fakes to the halfback and throws a little quick pass to Trace Bruckler, and Bruckler picks up eight yards. Wilson had a relationship with Nick Warheim, his old high school football coach in Oklahoma City at Pell City High School. And Nick's son, Derek, is the offensive coordinator here. That's how Terry ended up in Albuquerque. On second and two, he tosses it over to Bobby Wooden, 
And Wooden's got no chance with that Aggie speed. Aaron Hansford wraps him up for a loss of two. See the lineup on the screen today. Wilson surrounded by some wide receivers that have a lot of experience in Manny Logan Green and Andrew Erickson. Up front, New Mexico will give up a ton of size at the line of scrimmage with those beefy Aggie defenders. That'll be a big story all day. How does New Mexico measure up in the trenches? Just 25% on third down this year for New Mexico. And they're going to fall short here. Manny Logan Green makes the coach at the 33. But nice tackle by Deuce Harmon. It's fourth down. Somewhat of a frantic start. You start off with a completion, and you know that that's been a problematic down for the Lobos all season. You see Terry Wilson, they're going to have to rely on his legs today as well, something the defensive coordinator Mike Elko for the Aggies anticipates. He is an excellent runner. They haven't utilized that element of the offense much, have the Lobos, but it has certainly hurt the Aggies this season so far in their first two contests. Aaron Rodriguez will punt it for New Mexico to a dangerous man standing back at his 25-yard line. Mr. All-Purpose Anaya Smith, what a great punt. Anias fields it at the 19. He's got a seam. Watch out. He's tripped up in New Mexico territory at the 45-yard line. Mr. All-Purpose does it again. It's a return of 39 yards. I love how decisive he is here. Sets up his run, drifts to the left first, and then gets upfield almost immediately. Most of those yards gained right between the hashes. Didn't spend any time dancing. Just get upfield quickly and have your offense start this possession in plus territory. Zach Calzada, the sophomore from Sugar Hill, Georgia, was a backup to Kellen Mond two years ago. Started the season as the backup this year. Throws a completion inside the 30 to Chase Lane. First down, Aggies. Calzada came in last week, Taylor. You could tell not only was he excited, maybe a little bit nervous, because that ball certainly was jumping out of his hand. The problem was too much velocity, a couple of misplaced throws. The game was moving faster for him than it needed to be. Definitely slowed down in the second half. Strong start here with the first completion. 16-yarder, he looked comfortable there. Spiller is tripped up. At the 25-yard line, Isaiah over 1,000 yards rushing last year with nine touchdowns. Chase Lane, you saw with the 16-yard catch. Anaya Smith already putting the Aggies in great field position. Up front, look at the right side of the line today. Kenyon Green actually just a late scratch on Layden Robinson moves over to right guard, and Blake Trainer moves up to right tackle. It just happened before the game started. Second and nine after Spiller got one. Fake to him, and then they throw it out of the backfield inside the 10. Five, touchdown, Devon Achain. <laughs> 26 yards for the sophomore. Seth Small comes onto the field. A senior from Katy, Texas. Just three minutes and 16 seconds into the game, and it's seven nothing Aggies. Well, we talked about how they needed to get in sync. Boy, it looks like that week of practice helped Zach Calzada. Get the ball to your playmakers. High probability completions and already results in the score. See a little bit of two back sets from both of these offenses. This is something the Aggies do. So watch this, kind of like a zone read. Offensive front blocks to the right. He could give it or he can just pass it to A chain. They split. So he across that backfield. It forces the defense to pick and choose. Who's going to end up with this football? Both backs are lethal for the Aggies. And a great start for the offense here today for AM. A chain was the Orange Bowl MVP for the way he ran the football. Now we see the way he can catch it as well. So Terry Wilson comes back on the field down 
nothing Alyssa he very quickly became the leader of New Mexico's team yeah he very quickly won over his offensive line and coaching staff as soon as he walked in the door guys when he came they made it clear to him that you're not just going to be handed the job you still have to compete for this Terry came in put his head down and he won the job quickly coach Gonzalez saying he had every excuse in the world to come in and say hey I'm coming from the SEC I'm high and mighty he's humble as can be and a big team guy Kentucky fans know that very well yes they do he, he left that school in, in the good graces of everyone in Lexington he's got a tall task today it's a little sweep that goes to Luke Weisson freshman from Rio Rancho New Mexico as we take a look at the Aggie defense after they gave up three yards there on first down Marvin Leal is the leader of that defensive front as they try to replace Bobby Brown from last year and who's going to be the communicator this season it was Buddy Johnson last year maybe it's Hansford this year second and seven Wilson throws and it's out of the range from Manny Logan Green it's third down Wilson's going to have a difficult challenge today against this secondary stench it's one of the best in college football yeah you know without Miles Jones again today it looks like but still coming into the season many thought one of the better secondaries not only in the conference perhaps in all of college football and they've done an excellent job outside of some tackling mishaps last week versus Colorado you're looking at one of the better secondaries that you're going to find at the college level just precautionary with Miles he did warm up on a third and seven Straight ahead goes Bobby Cole, and he moves the chains up to the 36-yard line, the fifth-year senior from California, tackled by Andre White. Mexico gave Texas A&M a four-quarter football game back in 2008. Aggie fans will remember that one in Albuquerque when they held on to win 28-22. He surveys the field and throws into double coverage. Hansford right there with the intended receiver. It is second down. Uh, Hansford and Antonio Johnson converging on that play. Played a little bit of zone behind that. We've seen on well, the previous third down, sometimes the AM rush can be utilized against it. That time the Lobos able to pop that draw. Antonio Johnson. In a nickelback position, maybe the most violent player on this defense. It's Jace Taylor, the intended target, and look at this. Cole is swarmed by Michael Clemens and friends, the graduate from Garland, Texas, in the backfield. He just didn't take the cheese that time. There was some misdirection, very similar to what AM did on their touchdown throw. Watch the cross action, see the sniffer on the back side, that tight end. He's the sniffer. What's he going to do? He could have arc released, and Clemens said, forget it. I saw the handoff cleanly. I'm going to collapse and make the play from the backside. It's the backfield action that was supposed to block number two that time. Instead, he read it well for a tackle for loss. Third and 13 for Terry Wilson in the New Mexico Lobo offense. Over the head of Manny Logan Green, Deuce Harmon in coverage down there fourth down and one of the things that New Mexico pointed out is just the length the size of the secondary and how difficult it's going to be to find open receivers it's not like you can throw them open necessarily versus this secondary because of their length not only do they run well but they're able to play the ball in the air well it's going to have to be really good ball placement today for Terry Wilson and his downfield pass. Rodriguez to punt again. Nia Smith, big return last time. This one has more hang time, and he has to call for a fair catch at the 29-yard line. It's a 37-yard punt. Here are today's keys to victory, brought to you by Barbecue Guys. A lot of this built on last week's experience. You see the Manning boys, they're everywhere. Over there hustling their way to try to get to the grill. Well, first thing is just to clean up the details. Offensively, too many missed assignments around a new starter quarterback. Separation at wide receiver versus especially press man and then tackling better in their secondary, which really allowed the big run plays for the Colorado offense. It's fundamental Man stuff. Those Mannings are everywhere right now. Calzada, clean pocket, 
wide open as the day is long. How about that, Damon Demas? Touchdown, 70 yards. True freshman from Houston, Texas. It's the longest play of the season, the 70-yarder. So we have our first flag on the field. Today's referee is Wayne Winkler. Aggies correction number 70. have had issues throwing the deep ball because the deep threats have been injured. Caleb Chapman, unfortunately, injured again and out of today's game. So in steps the true freshman. Another flag. And so far, the AM offense has had less difficulty to point after. Kicking team, number 34. Five yard penalty, still a try down. Changes everything, Stinch, if Texas AM identifies a deep threat in SEC play. There's something that they've lacked really since Jimbo Fisher has been here. They've had guys maybe that could get behind defenses. We just haven't seen it happen that much. Something that the coaches have kind of lamented. They pointed to Caleb Chapman as a guy that a season ago was capable of that prior to his injury. Hasn't been full speed. And now you see Demas taking the top off of defense. It's closer to an NFL extra point after those penalties. Well, only three plays so far on offense, and two have resulted in touchdowns. Calzada to Demas, 14-0, Aggies. Fourteen nothing, just three plays on offense. First career catch is a 70-yard touchdown for the true freshman, Damon Demas, Texas State champion, long jumper. Having a good start to his Saturday. Coaches made good on that one, didn't they? They kept saying, look, hey, keep an eye on this number one, not just as a function of stepping in for 81 and Chapman, but the fact that they were excited about his skill set, knowing last week's game, the complexion of it changes completely if they generated big plays. They didn't have that. They got to get that going a little bit this season. Defense has also looked good so far, forcing a couple of punts. This is what we've seen so far on the season. First two games, just eight and a half points per game allowed. In the second half last week, Colorado did virtually nothing, just 23 passing yards. They did not allow a third down conversion, the Aggies in that last game. And you see the house call that they made in week one against Kent State. Leon O'Neill with the 85 yard pick six returning nine starters since yeah. from that defense last year I mean it's you know you start talking wrecking crew I mean is it that level maybe at back into the season we'll see they've been dominant though Wilson keeps it himself and is taken out of the air by Tyree Johnson senior from Washington DC second down it's gonna be really difficult I mean to get any movement up front for New Mexico and they use a ton of misdirection the idea is to get you leaning one way or the other defensively so that you take yourself out of position. Because outside of that, it's going to be very difficult for this offensive front to handle what is one of the more physical down lines out of the Southeastern Conference. Wilson on second and 10, throws ahead, and it's caught by Trace Bruckler. He picks up four yards. It'll be third down. There's Miles Jones out there. A little time in there, physical tackle on the edge. We already talked about New Mexico, the woes, the difficulties on third down. They've averaged over nine yards to go on third down coming into today. They've been able to stay ahead of that average, but with no greater success outside of the draw play on their opening possession. Third and six from the 29-yard line, and Wilson keeps it himself. Saw him do a lot of this 
for the Wildcats. First down run. Only 47 yards rushing for him so far on the season. Got a good block from Bobby Cole and picks up eight yards. It's twice now we've seen it, right? Makes sense if you're New Mexico, new quarterback, guy that's still kind of rounding into their passing game. He's been given a ton of authority as Terry Wilson. As to what he wants to do, he can set protections, he can audible to different plays, but they've trusted him on third down with the draw to convert. Wilson against his body, off the back foot, feeling some pressure from Tyree Johnson. DeMarvin Leal is quickly become the leader of this defensive line. And going back to what you're saying, Stench, about those nine returning starters, he said last year they had to develop some chemistry as the season went on. But because there's so much continuity, they already had that chemistry this season. He said at times, maybe in the first couple of games, they got even too comfortable with each other. Cole gets a couple on second down. And that's a blessed problem, right? The, the, if anything, it's, hey guys, we got we get along great. We know each other well, but we can't lose our edge. We can't allow ourselves to go out there and lose that element of it. But you see the Lobos going tempo. Third and seven, Wilson trying to find some space, and he can't get through that initial pursuit up to the 42-yard line. As Leal, the aforementioned defensive tackle, makes the stop. It's fourth and five, and New Mexico will punt for the third time just halfway through this first quarter. Rodriguez. Back to Smith at the 15, makes the first man miss, and then loses his footing and gets to the 19. Despite the early start, Aggie Nation is here and packing the stands at Kyle Field. Smoothest play brought to you by Velveeta. It didn't take long to get smooth in this one, right? Damon Demas, touchdown, longest play, scoring play of the season. Games only run four plays, two touchdowns. A way to start for Zach Calzada, three of three, 112 yards and two touchdowns. 26 yarder to A chain and the 70 yarder to Demas. First down, he tosses it over to Spiller, and Spiller looking for running room. He gets a yard, and while Calzada's out there on the field, Haynes King, after the surgery, feels like an extra coach down there, Alyssa. Yeah, he's definitely helping his offense. And, and you talk about leadership. Haynes King has demonstrated that certainly throughout practice. Jimbo Fisher said he's been on the cart helping coach up the quarterbacks. He was doing the same thing in warm-ups, and he was celebrating as much as he could on the sideline with his uh, with his leg in that boot and on that scooter. I will also say I've never seen some D linemen run as fast as they did on that last bomb of a touchdown by Texas A&M. Team-wide celebration on second and eight. Nice ball to Chase Lane. And Calzada throws a fastball. It'll be third and, and short. Oh, they give him the first down past 30, right at the 30, I should say. There's King, who broke the leg in the first quarter last week in Colorado, starting the first two games of the season. And they want that right leg to heal the stench because he can fly. It's amazing to hear the, not only his teammates, but the coaches talk about just how twitchy of an athlete he is. The guy's explosive, he's got some top end speed, They're eager to get him back. Calzada, just a little too much juice on that ball to Anaya Smith. It's second down. That, that was one thing I witnessed on the field with Alyssa before the game stench, just standing at midfield watching Calzada warm up, standing next to Jimbo Fisher. This guy puts a lot of life on those fastballs. Yeah, and he needed to on that one. That's a catch that Smith has to make. That's not one that you can throw in there with any touch. Anaya Smith, one of the better weapons for them out wide, a guy that has to help out his quarterback on that throw. Second and 10, Calzada facing some pressure. And because of it, he throws wide Demon Demas. Lobo line led by Joey Noble got a little pressure there. Brought pressure there that time from the second level. One inside, an inside move. Both of them working into the B and A gap respectively. Maybe get a shot on the quarterback. Clean pockets. That was also something that AM struggled with last week in protection. Again, the All American Kenyon Green is at right guard with Blake Trainer at right tackle. 
And Calzada's got pressure again, and he throws it close to the first down marker to Jalen Weidemeyer. It's going to be about a yard shy. Great job that time by Jake Saltonstall. One right now versus Jameer Johnson, the left tackle. We talked about the reconfigured offensive front and back-to-back -back pressures allowed by the new faces along the Aggie offensive line forces the first Aggie punt of the afternoon. I can't get over how many people are here for an 11 a.m. kick and how loud they've been to start the game. So great to have a full environment again here on a SEC Saturday. They wanted the Aggies to go for it there on fourth down. Play of game, kicking team, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Jimbo Fisher in his 12th year as a college football head coach with 111 wins, fourth year at a and It's interesting, the Aggies haven't had a 3-0 start stench in any of his previous three seasons. First punt for Nick Constantino. It's a good one that goes over the head of Manny Logan Green, and it'll be downed at the five. 61 yards for the sophomore from Australia. He's channeling his inner Shane Leckler on that punt. Wherever fun happens. Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Terry Wilson and the Lobos down 14-0. This is fourth different school. Wilson has been enrolled in. Never played for Oregon, but was there for was there briefly. Aaron Dumas, look at that hole through the middle of the Aggie defense. Giving the Lobos some cushion after a 16-yard run for the freshman from the other side of this state in El Paso. Out the Aggies in a stunt. See the two D linemen there in the middle? They were swapping or exchanging responsibilities. It was McKinley Jackson and Jaden Peavy. Those linebackers got lost in the wash. They hit it right downhill, right behind the center. Kyle Stapp. Wilson has plenty of time throws into traffic bounces off one guy and it's caught by Manny Logan Green no they say they say he's out of bounds that was a, that was a Franco Harris like deflection there ruling on the field is an incomplete pass the player to touch the pass jumped from out of bounds therefore was out of bounds when the pass was touched he play on the ball by Leon O'Neill and See there, if you're out of bounds and you haven't reestablished yourself in bounds before touching the football, make that completion. Another big hole for Dumas, and he's out to the 34 yard line. Same play. You're hitting right downhill. This time, though, no gap exchange. Watch inside, and you see that's just poor gap integrity. Both linebackers split. One went to the respective right side, the other went to the left side. He gashed right up the middle. Andre White and Aaron Hansford played wide. Good job by the interior Lobos offensive front of occupying the defensive line. Wilson fakes the toss and throws out of bounds second down. Dumas is one of 22 Lobos that is from the state of Texas. It's a very big deal for New Mexico to play this game stench because they recruit this territory. Now, Dumas is from El Paso. That is 10 hours from College Station. It's a big place, but 22 guys on the team. It's just right down the road, man. It's the same, same state and everything. It's a commitment. Already two big runs for him in the game. And he gets the handoff again, and Aggies are in the backfield with him. Leal first to him. It's a loss. A penetration right now. By the time Dumas got the ball, Leal was practically there with him. He's a guy that just so impressive. Can play inside, can play outside. Already Leal with two tackles for loss. AM only has three 
as a team. For eight, a huge contributor, making life miserable for Terry Wilson with the negative yardage plays. You saw Danny Gonzalez, the head coach, on the sideline. Wilson on a QB run, doesn't have much place to go. Donnell Harris helped make the tackle. It'll be another Lobo punt. On the run by the Lobos. He get behind the sticks with that tackle for loss. Now that's the last three third downs where New Mexico has chosen to keep the ball on the ground and try to convert in rushing. They were able to do it two other times. The time the Aggie defense more than prepared for the key run. Already the fourth punt of the first quarter. And Smith, he does pick it up at the last minute and puts it into Lobo territory and takes it to the house. There is a flag down. He caught the Lobo punt team napping and decided to field it. During the return, holding receiving team number seven. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Kind of okey doked him, didn't he? And he knows that he did. Just kind of plays possum a little bit. I will just let it go. See, it's the holding penalty was called. And hard to see Tyreek ah. Chappelle, who's on the sideline. Saw three, three Lobos get blocked to the ground. As you see Smith there, he just kind of lulls him to sleep. I'm going to let this ball die. Picks it up at the last second. Yeah, there's Chappelle with too much jersey, and he didn't even need to do it. I'd be all right with not seeing a flag come out right there. I mean, it didn't look like he steered him away from the play. A-chain back in, had the touchdown reception to start the scoring. Sophomore from Missouri City, Texas. So much talk about Isaiah Spiller, who's had a, a great career, but to have that one-two punch of Spiller and A-Chain, that's why Aggie fans think they could have a big season. There's no doubt. That, that was a strength coming into this season. I mean, you knew that that was a known commodity. The difficulty has been now the new faces along the offensive front. You had four new starters along an offensive line that in the previous years had accumulated a ton of starting experience. Shane hits the hole hard. The guy can fly. And he's inside the 30, down to the 25. Most of you know he's a two-sport star here in College Station, an All-American track runner in the 100 meters, the 200 meters, and the 4 by 100. You see the speed here. Good time, a good job, too, by the right side of the offensive front. Talk about the undersized blocking, undersized rather defensive front. Good job by the receivers. If you want explosive plays in the run game, your receivers have to step up. Offensive line's been spoken about a lot. Receivers have to do their job as well. H-Chain had no place to go this time. Three Lobos tackle him. Langston Murray was the one that got the pressure, and Sire Riley wrapped him up. Great job by Murray. Getting upfield almost immediately. And as you mentioned, you know, A chain, when you got your back throwing moves in his own offensive backfield, not ideal. At that time, you know, it's just a zone blocking to the left. Number 74, Ogumbi, a, a tough time. It's the motion, the movement that they play with along the Lobo defensive front. Calzada gets it off. Last play of the quarter, and he's going to go down again. It's Justin Harris with the sack, the former Baylor Bear. This, this is the end of the first quarter. The Aggies look great to start the game with a couple of touchdown passes from Zach Calzada to Devon A-Chain, and the first catch of Devon Demas's career. They're up 14-0. PB, that was a lot of fun to call last Saturday night with those two in a rowdy Kroger Field in Lexington. Here, 14 0 to start the second quarter, and AM looked so good the first couple of times they had the football. 
not so much on that drive. Calzada wide of Weidermeyer, fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah, and what got us there was just really poor interior line play dealing with that active defensive front that the Lobos play with. And you see Coach Fisher coaching up his quarterback. Giving him some encouragement. We come to the tips. The challenge that they're running into, of course, is that, look, you start out hot on the third down. You've got an opportunity to hit a receiver that's running open. You've got to put the ball on. Constantino, 61-yarder last time. And again, pins the Lobos inside their 10-yard line. We have more SEC college football action today at 4 Eastern, number 20, Arkansas, host Georgia Southern. And our Saturday night game presented by T-Mobile's in Death Valley is LSU host Central Michigan. That'll be at 7.30 Eastern time. Razorbacks are ranked for the first time in five years after they gashed Texas for over 300 yards rushing last week. And of course, next week, they're over in Jerry's World in Arlington to play these Aggies. What do you think of Sam Pittman's squad in season number two? They're playing more than just inspired ball. And you know, a new guy, a quarterback in KJ Jefferson. And boy, he played well a week ago, along with the defense. It really set the tone in that game. Alyssa, that's going to be a heck of a game with the Razorbacks and Aggies next week. Yeah, not that we're supposed to look past the game right now, but you can't help but do that, right? Looking at this A&M offense, certainly after the way they started today, taking on that Arkansas defense under Barry Odom, who I think needs a raise in the state of Arkansas. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Second and nine for a pickup of one. It's Terry Wilson inside his own 10. Uh-oh, gets it off, but Michael Clemens was running right at him, two on two, third down. And once again, they're, they're trying to block Michael Clemens with the ball, basically. There's, it's the play fake. It's the ball fake in the backfield. They want him to chase Dumas down inside. He's not going to do it. Instead, he makes a free run to Terry Wilson. It's happened a couple of times. Clemens is a big, long defender guy that goes about 6'5 plus difficult to get the ball up and over his outstretched arms. Wilson's just one for his last eight. Good ball and nice move after the catch by Zarek Struggs. And they give him the first down. First one they converted via the pass. And a big one, of course, given the field position that they started with. So working against Jones, who, as we've mentioned, has been nicked up a little bit at the top of the route. Did a good job. Nice protection, at least enough to allow Wilson to kind of half roll out and deliver the football downfield. Can they keep the drive going? That's been the problem so far. Option toss to Dumas, and he gets leveled after a pickup of three. Antonio Johnson and Damani Richardson on the tackle. Johnson is a guy that Mike Elko says will tee off on you and has ever since he came to college. The guy's just a violent player. He arrives in a nasty disposition. Does a good job playing in space, strong and run support. Tell you what, he's already got last week versus Colorado, nine tackles. Been out on the field a lot already. I think it's the 26th snap for the Aggie defense. In trouble, and down he goes. Tyree Johnson beat the left tackle for the sack. We talked about what New Mexico was trying to do. Some of the play action, because they know they could not hold up in protection repeatedly. That time, Kate Briggs at left tackle. We talked about the size he's given up. Tyree Johnson did a good job, not only just with his get off, but bending the edge. The left tackle turn his feet and short to the corner. Put in third and 10 plus for Terry Wilson. Just too much pressure. Nobody open down the field. Fourth down. Good job rallying defensively. And you see the coming out. You get the conversion on third down. A little bit of slipping. Where are you going to go with this football? He's just throwing on the run. Wilson just nowhere came to go with that ball downfield. 
Aggie defense able to get off. See if the Aggie offense can get something going. Rodriguez from his one. Barely got it off, and Smith calls for the fair catch at the 40. It's a 44-yard punt. Aggies have the football up two scores. Welcome back to College Station where the Aggies have a 14-0 lead here over New Mexico. Now, of course, a lot of Texas A&M fans were a little bit stressed out about a week ago in that Colorado game. Of course, Haynes King goes down, Zach Calzada comes in, and we talked about how he was a little bit stressed out, a little bit rattled when he took the starting or took over the starting job for Haynes King. Offensive coordinator Daryl Dickey, though, saying that those are the kind of games that you grow up. You're always going to have those games here and there where you don't play your best, but it's the way you figure it out and rebound into the next week. So far, I think this offense has rebounded pretty well. No question. They have Alyssa with two touchdown passes by Calzada to start the game, and he throws a good ball to Lane, but he can't make the catch. Dante Martin hits him as the ball got there. It's another it's a drop by your receiver. You see Chase Lane, it looked like he secured it. But before he turned to try to get upfield, he was right there at the sticks. Instead, proves to be an incompletion. Saw Anaya Smith earlier with what should have been a catch. To help out Calzada, who's hit some nice throws in this game. He chain out of the backfield, hands it to Spiller. Haven't seen him do much yet. First down run for the junior from Spring, Texas. Spiller's been more of a decoy, really, in this game. You saw it on the touchdown catch to open up the scoring in this game. Look at that opening. Offensive front just kind of escorting the Lobos to the left. But a lot of that was created by the backfield action of A-Chain. Spiller looking for blocks from A-Chain. Can't get them, and he loses yardage this time. Jarek Reed on the tackle for loss. That time, Spiller tried to bounce it one too many times. Really needed to just kind of stick his foot in the ground and try to get upfield, get back to the line of scrimmage. Wasn't very clean on the perimeter. You saw him, he kind of tried to bounce it once, and he tried to bounce it twice. It cost him them two yards. That time the right side didn't do a very good job there on the perimeter as well of capturing the edge to allow Spiller to get downhill. Spiller could pass Johnny Manziel in the all-time Aggie rushing ranks today. Calzada throws a home run ball, and it's incomplete. He's looking for Demas, but covered up by Patrick Peake. Good job by Peake. Get there at the last minute. Watch him play this ball in the air. He got his hands right between those of DeMond Demas. See Calzada. Fall, rolling to his right and falling away. You talk about arm strength for him to even get it down that far. It's pressure, too, by Joey Noble to force that throw. And you can see Jimbo Fisher. He's out on the field, called that timeout. Timeout. Texas a Not happy They're with the pre-snap operation at all. It'll be 30 seconds. Of his offense. And you can see the frustration now. He's starting to mount. And it started on that first down run. You get a negative yardage play. You take a shot on second down quarterback is pressured and now you're facing third and 10 plus coming up tonight it's SEC football final Dari Benjamin Gene Chris will take you through the stories for week three in the SEC and break down every game it's right here on the SEC network and the ESPN app one app one tap what kind of chance percentage chance do the Gators have today at home in the swamp against number one Alabama uh, like 15 percent maybe is that, is that, does that feel that high? That seems about right. Yeah. I mean, look, it'd be one thing if you're going into the game, known commodity at quarterback, the guy that you've relied on a couple of times to generate some big plays, and Anthony Richardson, not even full speed. And here, can the Aggies get back on track, especially on third down? See if the protection holds up. You see the Lobos. Are they bluffing? Because they just showed pressure. Nice strike. First down to Lane, making up for the drop. A little dummy cadence that time for a and Sometimes that's just enough. you got a true freshman at center. Protection holds up. Just kind of sits down right there. Inside defender to get run off by the route right up the hash mark. 
Nice conversion. 18 yards for Lane. Quick throw to Anaya Smith. This is what he does such a great job of. When nothing should happen, he turns it into something. Break, broke two tackles there. Second down, tough physical guy that can carry the football. You've already seen the punt return. And now we see the catch, and he's the only person to ever do all of that here at College Station, just one of 10 in SEC history. As soon as he gets the ball in his hands, he converts to a ball carrier. Runs like a running back. He split backfield, two back set for AM. Spiller in trouble. And it's third down. Jake Saltonstall on the tackle. What's going on with the Aggies up front? Now, once again, it looks to me like on that one they were looking to read Saltonstall. I don't know if that should have been a pull because it looked very similar to the action that we saw on the touchdown throw. AM on their opening possession. Time maybe a bad read as far as giving to Spiller leading to the main yardage play. Luke Matthews still out with a shoulder injury. Bryce Foster, the true freshman, snaps it back to Calzada on third and five. Another bullet for a first down inside the 20. That's Anaya Smith putting the Aggies in the red zone. Calzada rips this ball in. Nia Smith did a good job as he throttles down out of his break. Good protection, nice clean pocket. You can see Anaya Smith. If he doesn't throttle down a little bit on that route, that ball's probably on his hip, maybe a little bit behind him. Instead, he timed it just right in sync with his quarterback. Aggies have struggled in the red zone so far this season. In trouble, Calzada didn't see Joey Noble coming. And he's sacked back at the 24. Comes a flag. Once again, pressure. That time, it was Kenyon Green who's in there at right guard without Layden Robinson. He was pretty gimpy last week versus Colorado. The flag came in from the back judge. So you can see. Perhaps a defensive holding. Holding defense number 14. After this is still the goal, we play first down. It's a first New Mexico penalty, and it's a big one. That's part of the reason why Calzada had nowhere to go with this football, but you can see Green giving up that pressure once again. Joey Noble able to get it to the backfield. And First and just a couple. Aggies have had three empty red zone possessions so far this season. Spiller gets down to the six. Spiller still down after that run. The red zone offense. They've struggled. There's no doubt. Only five scores. Only four of those being touchdowns. You think about that. Down the inside of the 20. They're talking about six. They're not looking for three. Much less empty possessions. It's been the challenge for a &M. Second down with Ernest Crownover and Devon A-Chain in the game. And A-Chain is hit in the backfield. Joey Noble again. We talked about how active this defensive front is, so watch Noble just slice right inside. What happens is Blake Trainer, guys stepping in there at right tackle. He, he hesitates, he flinches just a little bit. Jimbo Fisher talked about that. You can't afford to do that versus a defensive front that's going to slant and stunt, especially when you're running these zone blocking schemes. That's the fourth tackle for loss now by the Lobo defense. Third down, and looks like that'll be enough to move it down to the five-yard line as Spiller 
That's about half a yard. Just him. It's been tough sliding. A lot of the difficulty so far when you look at the first down plays for Texas A&M, it's the runs they called six of them. They've gone for two yards. Think about that. What that sets up on second down. 12 runs, 18 yards on the game. It's two per carry. Spiller makes a man miss. Touchdown, Aggies. That is Spiller's 20th career rushing touchdown. That time they were able to get it outside. A little bit of confusion even in the backfield that time. Great individual effort by Isaiah Spiller to get into the end zone. Shaking up a little bit earlier in that drive and rally. Wasn't always pretty, but 12 plays, 60 yards in five minutes and 51 seconds. And now Jimbo Fisher gives Mr. Calzada a talking to up three scores. Here on a steamy hot Saturday in September. This play looked destined to fail, Stinch, at the beginning. Yeah, a little confusion in the offensive backfield. Spiller and Anaya Smith, it looked like, expected to get that ball. You see, Anaya Smith kind of converts. It looks to me like maybe even by alignment. I'm not sure that Spiller wasn't supposed to be offset in that two-back look on either side of Calzada. He's supposed to be the lead blocker. We've seen that a couple of times, especially on these counter power plays. The opposite back ends up being the lead blocker. Both running backs look like they were expecting to get the football. So much respect for all these Aggie fans. The home of the 12th man is rocking on an early Saturday kick. Terry Wilson was here three years ago. Lost in overtime. He, he started his career with the Oregon Ducks and then transferred to Garden City Community College for 2017. Three years at Kentucky. You see the numbers there. Graduated there and became certainly a fan favorite. Had an extra year of eligibility. Kentucky switched offensive philosophies. And he called his old friend, offensive coordinator Derek Warheim, and his dad, Nick, who was his high school coach, and said, I'm coming to play for you guys in my last year of eligibility. 19 and 8 is the starting quarterback with the Cats. Bobby Cole gets a couple at second down. He came off a really nice game last week versus New Mexico State. Threw for nearly 400 yards. One of the things that was attractive for Terry Wilson was the authority he'd be given as a quarterback changes that he could make, adjustments he could make. He's still growing into that role. It hasn't always been perfect. But he can fix things after the fact with his athleticism and ability to run. Good ball in stride, finding Logan Green, who's up past the 30 to 31. Antonio Johnson knocked him out. Outside the last couple of possessions, New Mexico's done far better here today on third downs, at least getting to third and manageable throughout the first quarter was able to get the third and we've seen a couple of runs a draw with the QB draws one where they fake the screen and look for Terry Wilson to try to make a play with his legs they do have one conversion passing Wilson held on to it too long and Michael Clemens made him pay Leal in there too we knew this was going to be a struggle there's only going to be so many drop back attempts by New Mexico here today. They tried it here. Clemens wins almost right now. Good job. Great use of his hands coming off the right edge of the offensive front. Do you know what today is, Dutch? National Cheeseburger Day. You it's hungry? Almost, almost every day. I got you a little treat. My favorite play by play guy, Pat. <laughs> Nia Smith from the 37 yard line. Did he go down? I think he stayed on his feet. I think Anaya Smith hurdling Lobos is tackled at the 13 yard line.
that's twice where you thought that nothing was going to happen on a punt return and he made the Lobos pet play that's 50 yards if in fact his knee didn't hit the ground the last time he did it on purpose this time does his right elbow make any contact established in his down let's see let's see it one more time Looking at it. Rolling on the field was that the receiver's knee did not touch the ground before the return. That play is under video review. Check that right elbow. Take a look during this timeout. Replay official got this right. He overturned the car, the call on the field because Anaya Smith's elbow did make contact with the grass. But then Smith does go into the tent. Hopefully it's just precautionary for him. Incredible athlete he is. But instead of a 50-yard punt return, the Aggies will start at their own 38. A-chain and Spiller in the backfield with Spiller going out of the backfield. And it's batted down by Tavian Combs. Calzada trying to get that football to A-Chain. Alyssa was saying this to us during a break stench. Jimbo's getting a little frustrated with how slow some of these plays are developing. Yeah, he's the play caller. He's getting the plays in, and then he wants them up and on the line. Not necessarily from a tempo standpoint, like a hurry up, but he wants to see the pacing of the offense pick up. More sense of urgency. Don't panic. This is a two-minute drill. Pick up the pace of this offense. He has been frustrated throughout the first half. Second and 10 all day to throw, and it's a completion up to Moose Muhammad for his first career catch. Let's go to the studio and Peter Burns. All right, thank you, Taylor. How about uh, we look about what Connor Bazelak is doing right now. Chance Looper, part of 274 yards, three touchdowns, Missouri up 31-0 over Southeast Mizzou State. Back to the Aggies. PB, just down the street from you is where Moose Muhammad is from. Myers Park High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. His dad, Hussein, all pro in the NFL. He's got to be going crazy right now. Calzada takes pressure and delivers the ball to Weidemeyer inside the 30, down to the 26-yard line. And then another play action. And once again, Calzada throwing under duress. But he finds one of his favorite targets, and why wouldn't he be? Jalen Weidermeyer, a great adjustment on that throw. But once again, Joey Noble, who is having his way with this offensive front for AM, we have called his name several times. He's spending a lot of time in the Aggie offensive backfield. 21 more for Weidermeyer, and just a couple for A chain out of the backfield down to the 21. Right now, as we mentioned, you know, not only new faces, but now new faces in new places. Well, there's one new face right there, Stench. And as I mentioned, Myers Park High School in, in Charlotte's where he, he's from. He, he was here last year, still is regarded as a true freshman since last season. Didn't count due to COVID. We have high hopes for him. And Jimbo Fisher said that he had his best week of practice this week. Chase Lane doesn't get much as Martin makes the tackle. But as you were saying earlier, after Demas made his first career catch, Jimbo Fisher's trying to identify who these next Aggie receivers are going to be. And amongst the veteran guys, the guys that have a little bit more experience, you see Mohamed subbing into the lineup, they haven't done a great job of creating separation. They have to do a better job, not only get off of man coverage, but once they're in the route, giving their quarterback space to throw the football. They're looking for their perimeter players to generate more opportunities. Pump faking is Calzada, and then Weidermeyer made that catch with Patrick Peak all over him, and he's going to be marked a yard shot. Looked like he wanted to get the ball to Chase Lane. He pulling that ball back, coming back out to Jalen Weidermeyer. So Seth Small 
who already has three points in this game. He just passed Tony Franklin for fifth all time in school history with career points. This is from 36 yards and he makes it 24 to nothing. In just a moment, it's time to eat like a champion as we give a shout out to a local eatery here in College Station. Right out, we'll see it. Back to uh, Bob Boys in College Station. See you in a couple. Guys, it's so loud here at the home of the 12th man. On a 24 nothing lead, and it's time to eat like a champion. Top of the hill, greasy burgers in Benchley, Texas is our spot this week. They've been family owned and operated since 2002. Stench, what'd you, <laughs> what did you get? The, he got the triple cheeseburger. Alyssa, what is that down there? I got the Hulk. I have not. <laughs> I have to put the microphone down. He, you got the Hulk. I got the Superman. You're going to have to talk instead of say no comment if I get a bite of this Superman right here. No, I got into it first, pal. I do the, you do the talking on this segment. I think mine weighs six pounds. You know, one thing, Alyssa, that you don't have, thank you to Kevin Maloney, our stat man, to go to get this. We have hot damn french fries up here. Oh, I have I some too down bonus. here. Oh, I have some bacon cheddar. Yeah, y'all thought you were by yourselves there. They are phenomenal. Special shout out to uh, Retha and Vic Valero, the second for providing today's meal. Original founders of Top of the Hill Greasy Burgers. Now, These are yeah. phenomenal. Now my breath's gonna stink for the halftime interview. Well, don't worry, we can smell it all the way up here. Thank you. A good Taylor's got gum. sauce all over his mic. <laughs> so if he sounds muffled later, we'll know why. Bunch of burger juice on your microphone. Fortunately for everyone, that's the end of the first half. Coming up at halftime, you can the watch the, second the live performance of the Fighting Texas Aggie Band on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming now on the ESPN app. Or you can go over to Top of the Hill Greasy Burgers. Take care of our friends just down the road. Get the triple, man. No messing around. What if oh, Alyssa offers him some French fries here in just a moment? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He got pretty fired up with Coach Fisher. Maybe he worked up an appetite during that first half. Especially considering the pace of the play, he was uh, burning some calories for sure there on the sideline. Zach Calzada, some great numbers in the first half. A couple of touchdown passes to start the game. 12 of 18, 203 yards and two touchdowns. And here's Alyssa with Coach Fisher. Coach, how would you evaluate the way your offense started and finished the half? Well, I love the way we started. We hit the media, we hit hot, made the right reads, got balls, got hats on hats. And then we spud it. We're not blocking people up front. We got to do a better job in the twists and stunts, which and there's nothing new that we haven't seen. It's we got to get better right there and do a better job. And we got to catch the ball. Guys around us got to play a little better and do good. What will the message be defensively? Keep doing what you're doing. If they don't score, we win. Keep locking in and being who you're going to be. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Jimbo. Thank you, Alyssa. Eat your heart out, Peter Burns, Benjamin Watson, Gene Chizik, and Chris Doring. Here is the Farm Rich Halftime Report. I'm just jealous I want some of that food. We'll get did the AM offense and Zach Calzada was the one that was powering it, hit a chain out of the backfield. He did a rest of the work for him. Some nice backfield action on that one. And then of course his freshman Devon Demas gets behind the defense. Big explosive plays early on in this contest, but that didn't really persist throughout the first half. And you can hear Hey, Coach Jimbo no. Fisher, of Texas A&M, number 42. That their offense kind of bogged down a little Texas bit towards the latter half of that second quarter. Something they're going to be a little bit more consistent with offensively. How about the defense and the way that they played so far, shutting out the Lobo offense? Yeah, picking up where they left off in the second half last week versus Colorado. They struggled in the first half, gave up some big plays, especially with QB scrambling. Game so far in this game, though, they've done an excellent job of bottling up Terry Wilson. Haven't seen a ton of quarterback run game. So you'd like to think that if you're New Mexico, this half offensively, maybe you try to get Terry Wilson a few more touches as a rusher. Coming out is A-Chain from the goal line. 
past the 35 and up to the 38 yard line. Alyssa caught up with New Mexico head coach Danny Gonzalez. What did he have to say, Alyssa? Yeah, guys, I asked him what the message was to the team at halftime. He said, well, when we started this game, we were playing scared. And by the time we stopped playing scared, it was 14 to nothing. He said, it's part of the culture change that I came to this program to do. You have to make sure that you come in believing that you can win this football game. There was also an emphasis on Anaya Smith and returning all those punts. They got to be better on punt coverage. That's a great point. I mean, that alone, the field position that has been seeded in special teams, really putting the Lobo defense behind the eight ball. Calzada go back to the air to start the second half, and it's a good ball inside the 40. Look at Demas put his foot in the dirt and get down near the 30-yard line. We saw it early in the first quarter. Did you see him just kind of sit down? Looks like he was trying to sell the post. He sits down, squats, comes right back out, pivots out, and turns Dante Martin around. But look at the pressure on Calzada. Blake Trainer, as we mentioned, in their right tackle. And it has been an adventure for the Aggie offensive front throughout this contest. Two catches for Demas, first two of his career. And they go over to Lane, that's incomplete. Dante Martin over there in coverage. Zach Calzada, the sophomore from Sugar Hill, Georgia, came in relief of Haynes King after the injury last week, struggled for three quarters, and then saved the day in the fourth to beat the Buffaloes in Denver. Now the starting quarterback with King's sideline. That tibia injury for at least a month. And A-Chain will get a couple. We mentioned that injury to King last week. Here's what happened, Stinch, in the first quarter. You know, he ended up scrambling around, almost escaped. Could have been a big run, actually, if they finished, but it's this whip around, and watch him plant his right leg. You have to think that it's the torque that was placed on his right leg as he skipped off the field. He said that the surgical procedure really went well. Couldn't have gone any better, but it seems as if at least a month without their intended starter at quarterback. Offense flinch. Jake Saltonstall came across for New Mexico. Offside. Defense number 95 jumped to the neutral zone across the offensive play for the Anna. Five yard penalty. First down. Correction. Correction. Still third down. We saw a gun beat. Gumby there stick out his left hand. Salt and Star came across the neutral zone, into the neutral zone, and caused him to move. See, hands came there on the sideline. The scooter, all that weight off his right leg. Two screws inserted in that right leg this week. They say the surgery went extremely well because that Calzada way over the head of Weidemeyer. Fourth down. He gets some immediate coaching. From Jimbo Fisher. You see that that ball sailed on. Him. Had a chance with Weidermeyer underneath that route. Fender had outside leverage coming across the field. See Jimbo Fisher saying he put it on him. That's a big bodied receiver in Weidermeyer. Give him a chance. Stay the air mail. Connor Choate, the 12th man, will snap it back. And Seth Small from 44 squeezes it in there. 27 nothing Aggies, the top scorers in the history of College Station. Their head coach then is now Georgia's special teams coach, Will Muschamp. Andy Logan Green, two yards deep in his own end zone. He's on his feet out near the 29 yard line. It's Saturday, time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday. And you just might get your, your 15 seconds of fan fame. What do you think about Auburn Penn State tonight? I, I, may, I think that's going to be maybe one of the best game environments we've had. Who knows how long? Certainly after last year, it's such a fantastic night game. It's a whiteout game. Beaver Stadium, even Auburn getting in on it, wearing their all whites with white face masks. 
Luke Wysong on a sweep. Gets up to the 34-yard line. Seeing that kind of environment return to college football in 2021 certainly has been special for all of us. We saw an incredible atmosphere in Lexington last Saturday night. And how about the 12th man fans today? On an 11 a.m. kick, knowing you're a huge favorite over New Mexico, more than 90,000 people on hand here at College Station. Terry Wilson drifts back and just throws it to the bench. Michael Clemens got a little pressure on him. It's third down. Yes, most of today seems like with Michael Clemens. Again, so much eye candy in the offensive backfield. Clemens has done a great job of deciphering who's going to end up with the football. Oftentimes it's been Terry Wilson, and he's been right in the other team's number two, his face, just about every time. It's Wilson and Clemens on a lot of these pressures. Mike Elko, the defensive coordinator, said this is our most talented group in the four years he's been coaching the defense. On third and five, Wilson throws a pass that was destined to fail because Jalen Jones blows up Chad Alexander out of the backfield. Try to climb the ladder to get it too. So this ball come out, fly sweep motion, seven, downhill Texas look. Now wearing number 86. Jones. Now wearing 86. Yeah. Another jersey adjustment. Quite a few of those. Coach Elko's only given up 80 total yards his defense so far in this game. Just 28 through the air. Moose Muhammad wearing a different jersey number. Is back there and he calls for a fair catch at the 20 yard line. Well, it's 27 nothing, but Zach Calzada has been coached up by Jimbo Fisher today, Alyssa. You guys have been talking about how much they've been talking to each other after every offensive drive. And one of the things that Jimbo told us in meetings this week that stood out to me was going back to that quarterback Texas position. What were some of the things that separated seven. Haynes King and Zach Calzada? And one of the things that Jimbo said was at times, Calzada almost got too into his head in the competition. He was too focused on winning the job rather than going out there and just having fun playing football. So that's something they've been working on with him. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, those guys, sometimes you have to remind them, just focus on what you're doing, not how you're doing. Spiller, all kinds of green grass in front of him. Combs pushes him out after an 11, make it a 16-yard gain. Good job right there on the left side. Everybody gets covered up, but i tell you what I like more than anything is Demond Demas out there blocking. Had a little bit of difficult time on our wide receiver screen in the first half time Demas maybe could have been called for a hold he was so enthusiastic Spiller again very similar play got tripped up by Joey Nobles had a great game in the backfield for the Lobos shoestring tackle by Noble too because if he doesn't get to Spiller's cleats right there and he just barely clipped him the Spiller's got ahead of steam I don't think he gets touched for the first 10 yards of that run know what he's able to do in space as it was great hustle play from the backside by 98 and Joey Noble. Calzada one on one ball is caught by Devin Price true freshman from right here at College Station first down. He said the coach said look we're going to get some of these young guys some more looks that we see. This is not just a function of the scoreboard. And it's also not just because Caleb Chapman and others are unable to go. They're looking for guys that can start to make plays on this perimeter to ignite the passing game at the wide receiver position. Reddy's found seven different receivers. Calzada steps up and gets sacked. Noble again. At that time, it looked like they were working to slide protection. So watch the offensive front. Really, it was Blake Trainer once again who just he's working inside in protection. And Noble just wins, gets upfield quickly, finds himself one on one with Isaiah Spiller. Not ideal matchup if you're AM. Noble has a sack and four tackles in the game. He's been in the backfield for a couple quarterback hurries. 
second and 15, and Calzada throws in front of Muhammad. Third down. Last week, last week, Taylor, he was a little bit behind and late. There have been a couple where he's been early, especially on these crossing patterns. His communication has been great with his teammates this week. Jimbo Fisher raved about that. Alyssa told you about it in the open of the show. False start on the Aggie offensive line. Fathery. False guard. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Even Fathery, true freshman, a guy that we thought we'd see a little bit in this game, perhaps a right tackle. Jameer Johnson started this game at left tackle. Father in there is a big body, 6'8, 320 pounds if he's an ounce. It was early on that one. 18 penalties in three games for the Aggies. Calzada is in trouble again. Somehow weaves his way out of it. And that ball on the sideline is incomplete. Tavian Combs caught it, but he was out of bounds. And this should be picked up. I mean, you've got three offensive linemen to that side that can pick up this protection. Instead, you end up getting a free runner at your quarterback, Cody Moon, pressuring Calzada, throwing against his body. That's really that close. close. That's really close on the boundary. They get the yeah. whistle off. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. Previous players on the video review. Well, last week, Calzada was rolling to his left. He had a beautiful touch pass to Spiller to win the game. This is similar, where he's rolling to the left. Watch this. The foot is down. Boy, that's an interception. It's that catch. Had control of the football, it would appear, as his foot was down, inbounds. This left foot right there. It's not touching any of the white. That is an interception as a function of yet another pressure on the AM quarterback in Zach Calzada. He cut right in front of Jalen Weidermeyer. Contagion Combs and generates the first total turnover, it looks like, for the Lobos in this game. Combs is a sophomore from Amarillo, Texas, one of 22. Lobos that is from the state of Texas. Danny Gonzalez, the head coach of the Lobos, has talked about how big of a deal it is to recruit this state. That's a really good look at it. He's got that ball. It doesn't look like it's jostling around. He's got control of it. Left foot was down in bounds. Yeah, it looks like a takeaway for the Lobo D. Yeah, it just took him a moment to make sure they got the yard line correct. After video review, the ball was intercepted by the defensive player at the 49 yard line. He had firm control of the ball and it put him down. First down to Mexico. Well, it's the second pick for Combs in three games. New Mexico now plus five in turnovers. And if there are two things that Jimbo Fisher wants to see significant improvement in this year's stint so far would be the offensive line and turnovers are minus four now on the season. Well, and the offensive line played a key role in that turnover. Now, you can talk about the decision-making at quarterback, no doubt. Throw that football away or eat it. Ideally, throw it away. You have an opportunity to do so. But think about what had him flushed in the first place was poor protection by the offensive front. Wilson, wide open receiver, but throws behind Andrew Erickson. You said it, Taylor, he had him. And that ball's just behind. You know he had to be feeling the pressure a little bit. Big Jake Peavy was bearing down on Terry Wilson. Watch number 92 just overpowering right in the lap of Terry Wilson. The ball is late and behind Erickson. Otherwise, 
Easy opportunity to open up this possession. To the ground with Dumas, who's had some success, but not there. Edgerin Cooper, true freshman, on the tackle. Coaches mentioned him. Guy that we would see quite a bit of today. Eye on him, did a good job of diagnosing that play, getting downhill right away. Right at the line of scrimmage. And a couple of pullers in front, too. And a good job of identifying and getting to the hole. Maggie show a delayed blitz on third and nine. And it's a good ball that is complete inside the 40 down to the 39. Manny Logan Green fired up to move the chains. He brought slot yellow, pressure yellow, into Monty yellow, Richardson will yellow. spin down in coverage. So you see him right there. He just doesn't break quickly enough on that ball. Terry Wilson delivers a strike. Able's to get that conversion. Lobos are in business on the heels of the turnover. Can they capitalize on the field position? First play in Aggie territory today. And they get a procedure penalty right as they All enter start. Aggie territory. Offense number five, five yard penalty, still first down. And Jarvis a little bit early, just rocked out of his stance. And you mentioned a couple times, Taylor, the crowd here today. They, I mean, they got up a little bit on that one. How many other places in college sports or any sport when you're up 27 is this loud? Inside the 42 to the 41, Leon O'Neill making the tackle on Dumas. O'Neill had that pick six in week one. He's been the, he's been the communicator, and he's communicating with the crowd now. Wilson throws a bubble. And Luke Weissong will get it down to the 37. It'll be third down from there. Great block by center Kyle Stapley on that middle screen. Great job of cracking down and opening up a little bit of opportunity. Well, part of the reason why he's such a good blocker is he'll be 26 in a few weeks. Stapley. A sixth year super senior is his 34th straight start. Super veteran. Third and eighth, jailhouse blitz by Elko, and Wilson throws it into the Aggie stands. Pressure was immediate. I'm not sure that a single act along the line of scrimmage was even interfered with. Look at this. You got four Aggies in your face right now. They weren't setting up a screen right there. You know, I asked Mike Elko yesterday on our call, are you blitzing as much as you used to? And he said, oh yeah, absolutely. Trying to be as deceptive as ever. Offense number two. Through the ball into an area where there was no eligible receiver. Loss of down at the spot of the foul. Fourth down. Probably the right call there, too, on how quickly Wilson got rid of that. You see the defenses that Elko has had since 2018. He was so respected before he got here at Notre Dame, at Wake Forest, and at Bowling Green. Led the SEC in total defense. I know this is the natural thing to number wonder, right? Six, number seven, Texas. Will he be a head coach one day? As successful as he's been as a coordinator. He certainly made his bones on the defensive side of the ball, that's for sure. So once again, he's Muhammad back there to return the punt. Terry Wilson, not capable of capitalizing on the turnover. Rodriguez jumps up to catch that one. And Muhammad runs up to make the fair catch at the 10. Good to see another freshman on the field for the Aggies, up big at Kyle Field.
just coaches interviews. We play a lot of fun getting to know you games with our guys across the SEC. Hey, before I send it back up to you guys, some injury news from the Texas A&M side. Anaya Smith will not return to his to this game. All I've been told is that he's banged up, but he will be out for the remainder of this one. Well, the hope is is that it's not too serious stitch for that game next week. Texas A&M, number 86, is now wearing seven. Playing Arkansas in the Southwest Classic, Anaya Smith is the only player in school history with over 200 yards rushing, receiving, kick returning, and punt returning. And we saw all of that yeah. on display today. Yeah, that's a blow if, if they can't get him back. We saw only a little bit of Miles Jones defensively wearing number zero as well for the Aggies. Spiller, who they've been a bit cautious with today, gets six. Layden Robinson, the right guard, did not play today. Caleb Chapman still dealing with some knee issues. Smith out for the second half, and Miles Jones did not play. Be critical to have all four of those guys next Saturday in Arlington. Spiller again, second and four, first down, past the 20. Tough run there by Spiller. Just okay. They talked about his receiving ability. Now he had necessarily been a real threat there, and how much better he's gotten in that regard. Just past Johnny Manziel for 17th all-time in rushing. Spiller did with that last run. Now he's got his eyes on Javorski Lane. That would be next on the list. So he's up to the 35-yard line. Another first down. It's a well-blocked play by the offensive front. We've said quite a few things about what they could improve this time. Captured the edge well. Nice job blocking on the perimeter. Isaiah Spiller taking advantage of that. That's what they're looking for. That's been the drumbeat of this offense since Jimbo Fisher has gotten here. They've been able to run the football with authority. They've definitely got the talent in their offensive backfield to be far more consistent with their rushing attack. Just gashing them play by play. Great run by Spiller, slow to get up. Great patience at the beginning of this run. See him wait, allows his blockers, Kenyon Green from the backside, weaving his way to the play side of that run. And he didn't jump in front of his pullers. A lot of these backs you see, they get anxious, they get ahead of the block, that do you any favors. Those guys are there for a reason. Great job of setting those blocks up and then explode through the hole. 46 for Spiller, over 100, past Javorski Lane for 16th all time with that run. Back in the red zone, now it's A Chain's turn. He's down to the 15. That is certainly where this Aggie offense will start with Spiller, with A-Chain, get the ball to Smith in space, and then Calzada will try to find Weidemeyer and some of these other young targets down the field. And other than Dima scoring, those three guys were the ones that had scored the touchdowns for this A&M offense, and the majority of the touchdowns a year ago. On second and seven, He's upended after only a couple. Good tackle by Corey Hightower. Now third down. Excellent tackle. A great pursuit from the backside as well. Chain getting out there on the perimeter. You hold your breath defensively. Knowing that not only will he run behind his pads, not a big guy, but can explode upfield quickly. Now substituting out of the line. Muhammad and Demas are at the top, and Jalen Preston at the bottom of your screen. Calzada in trouble, throws on the run, and it's caught. Weidemeyer first and goal. It's over the completion. This time, 
certainly feels like Calzada could have stayed in the pocket. Got a little bit early, but you see Weidermeyer bluffs like he's in protecting and releases. He does a good job when he saw his quarterback flush. See how far he had drifted back, then escapes the pocket. Good job of keeping your eyes downfield. That was an opportunity, it seemed as if the quarterback could have stood in that pocket and delivered. Regardless, able to get the conversion. Now Calzada drifts back, throws to Muhammad. was the best receiver in high school in North Carolina. In Charlotte, catching passes for Myers Park Mustangs a couple of years ago. And he came here with high hopes after the career his dad had as an all pro. Terrific player at Michigan State and then in the NFL for the Panthers. Moosin Muhammad III making his own name in College Station, Texas. <laughs> no, no Blue Jack Tigers course in our future. Let's take you back to Moose Muhammad's touchdown catch just a second ago, the first of his of his collegiate career. It's time for our celebration moment, brought to you by Allstate. Well, that's a fantastic gloves catch. Look at this throw under pressure once again by Calzada. Gives his receiver a chance. And look at that, just his outside hand. Middle of the three receivers. You see him working to the corner. And that is a fantastic demonstration of focus right here. Look at that. I thought he caught the tip of the ball, the point of the ball. He did. He caught the underneath side of that football. He must have some giant hands, some sticky gloves. Down goes Wilson. DeMarvin Leal with another sack. Again, looking at that catch, you mentioned it in the break. Gloves on. Did a great job pointing that football and bringing it to his body. This old man's got some monster hands. I bet he gets them honest. Gloves option. Regardless, great catch. Of course, on the other side of the ball, Marvin Leal making plays. Dropped by Wysong. Boy, you're right about Moose's dad. Great player for the Panthers, helping them get to the Super Bowl. And then lost to Tom Brady and the Patriots 18 years ago. Incredible man, too. Nick Saban gave a viral speech a few years ago about Muhammad and how much he enjoyed coaching him. Now Jimbo Fisher getting to coach his son. Alexander's got no running room, and the, again, the freshman, Edger and Cooper, comes in. We've seen number five flash a couple times today. No time, did a good job out, open field tackle, showing some of that range. They've been shuttling linebackers in Texas and out all game. Number seven is now wearing 86. Moose Muhammad is still swapping jerseys. The guy's going to be exhausted. <laughs> I mean, it's like a wrestling match over there on the sideline, just getting the guy in and out up the jersey so he can return punts. Wayne Winkler, our referee, is going to have to rest the pipes. He's yeah. <laughs> and wearing that number, 86. He doesn't have much room to run at the 35-yard line. Extra Yard for Teachers Week is an annual effort led by the College Football Playoff Foundation that brings college sports together to support and honor great teachers across the country at games and on social media. To learn more about Extra Texas Yard for Teachers, number 86 is now follow at CFP number Extra is Yard. It's like stair wrestling <laughs> over there. You see them over there? It's almost like they're in a fight. How about a special shout out from you for uh, teachers? I got so many teachers, all my aunts, both moms, grandmother, they're all teachers. They're all my favorite. I can't pick one. If I do, I'll mess around and get in trouble. 
Calzada hands to Spiller. Goes ahead to the 37 yard line. Calzada 16 of 26, 253 yards, three touchdowns. He did throw that interception earlier in this quarter. A pretty good job done by number 10 in his first career start. Should be the last play of the third quarter on a second and seven with a chain to Calzada's right throws to him. Breaks a bunch of tackles and gets ahead past the 40. It'll be third and short. It is all Aggies that at College Station quarter. on an early Saturday kick. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw Will Levis look so good the first couple of weeks, but in a dogfight with the Mox. That is really shocking, actually, because they could have beat Missouri going away if they protect the football better. Incredible crowd here today on hand to watch the Aggies roll over the Lobos as A-Chain makes the first down catch. There is a flag down. We asked Jimbo Fisher, is it like a targeted number of catches or touches for A-Chain? There yeah. is no foul for an illegal block in the back. First down. All right, up. So yeah, you know, around 12 to 16 touches or so a game. We got to get this ball to number six. Make sure that he's getting an opportunity to impact the game. He's had 11 touches here today. So pretty good so far. They're on track to get him the touches he needs to have the influence that he can have on this offensive engine. Spiller and A-Chain both in the game here, and Calzada throws it too quickly over to Demas, and Jimbo Fisher's back on the field again. Yeah, this time coaching up his receiver in Demas. So probably that was an issue last week. And this is something that gets overlooked. It's hard to tell sometimes. You say, oh, man, the quarterback's just out of sync. Oh, that's a bad ball from the quarterback. And sometimes it's a receiver that's running his route at the wrong depth, coming out of his break late. I have to think that on that route, Demas ran it too deep. That ball was a good five yards upfield. Demas had a 70-yard touchdown for his first career catch. A-chain gets gobbled up as Jarek Reed flies up there to make the tackle. Awkward tackle for A-chain. like he was bit underneath Reed as he went to the turf. Yet another Aggie limps off the field. We've seen a lot of that here this afternoon. Tree. He spins around. And see how he pulls it down? His left leg is his left leg. He's got underneath Reed when he went to the right leg. Ball stars. Offense, number 85, five-yard penalty, still third down. Meyer getting a head start. Still urging from the AM sideline. Hurry up. Get this pace. Get this ball snapped. That's another procedure penalty. Kind of sloppy here at midfield. Third and 15, have to get it inside the 35 to move the chains. Calzada, good ball to Weidermeyer, but he drops it. This is kind of reminiscent of last week. Jimbo Fisher talked about it all week. They just kind of take turns messing up. So right here, this is a good ball. Catch that ball. You got to bring that ball in. That's at least three now we've seen this afternoon. Where Calzada hasn't been perfect. The decisions haven't always been great. But there have been three drops, at least this time in tight end. Where the ball could have been brought in. That time it would have been to convert for a new fresh set of downs. Constantino. Tried to angle that one to the sideline and 
It'll be marked out at the 13. All Aggies at College Station today. This is SEC Network Football presented by Allstate. All Aggies today, 34-0 here at College Station with Alyssa Lang and Matt Stinchcomb on Taylor Zarzer. There he is. Moussin Muhammad, the two-time Pro Bowl wide receiver, all pro with the Panthers and the Bears. His son, Moose the third, with his first career touchdown catch today and his first career catch period for the Aggies. Defense has shut out the Lobos on the other side of the football. As Michael Clemens ran all over the field to make the tackle there, Logan Green. Sure, Mr. Muhammad is checking his phone from time to time to see what's going on in, in other games, just like we're doing as Wilson runs out of bound near a first down. One of the early games that we're paying attention to is Michigan State, his alma mater, beating Miami right now, 10 to 7 wow. in the third quarter. Finding out a lot about some of these teams coming into the season that we thought would be too highly up, as you see. Muhammad, maybe he's checking on that score. Just a yard for Cole. Speaking of the Big Ten, the SEC and the Big Ten are playing tonight, and it's time to make some picks. I'm off to a heck of a start, and I'm going with WDE, Auburn Tigers. You like them too. Melissa yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Except everybody but the voice of treason. <laughs> what? Wow. Look at that picture. Uh, is that a wanted photo? Wow. Shots Pulled fired by Mitch office. Hummer at Tom Schofield. Yikes. Voice of treason. Luke Wysong uh, gets a couple. Let's uh, one more time. <laughs> at huh. first, I thought that was a neck brace he was wearing. But the mask is down. <laughs> I've, never oh, won, I've never wanted to eight. tell him more. That is fantastic. Look at that. Uh, he, he looks terrified of that pick. I, he I can't see the picture. This is unfair. Oh, uh, you'll see it. Don't worry. <laughs> Scoey, Scoey as we call him, he's, he grew up not so far from State College. Geographic influence, maybe. Third and six, Wilson throws the bubble to Alexander, and he's never, all day, none of these guys have been able to get past the initial pursuit by the Aggies. Edger and Coopers look really good in the second half. A great job of pursuit. The second level's done a good job of that all game, really. The way they rallied to the ball so quick. Texas A&M number seven is now wearing 86. Texas A&M number seven is now wearing 86. Short kick. And it goes past Muhammad out of break, out of bounds with 10.39 to go in the game. Aggies will be 3-0 when they play the Razorbacks next Saturday. Fighting Texas Aggie band plays at halftime. Nobody, and I mean nobody, takes a bathroom break as the rain starts to fall and they're still here. You know, Stench, long ago, program won national titles with Coach Dana Bible, conference crowns with Bryant, Stallings, Cheryl, and Slocum. But they came to the Premier League in the land searching for sustained excellence, and they got it very quickly with what Manziel did 10 seasons ago. Yeah, it took a, a Heisman-worthy effort at quarterback, and really, when you look at the way that they were running their offense with Cliff Kingsbury, well, there wasn't like the league was ready to adapt as quickly as it needed to to the style of play that a and was using. Maybe what they had in quarterback in Johnny Manziel, the perfect trigger man. Ernest crowned over with the carry there. But now it's Jimbo Fisher's job to find that sustained success and compete for national championships. We see what he's done. He's going to get his 11th straight win, the second longest active streak in the FBS. That's the longest for the program in 29 years. And 
everybody knows what the standard though is what the expectation is compete for national championships that's the big question can he do it this year and into the future third and eight Calzada doesn't like what he sees and takes a sack and coach Fisher certainly isn't going to like that well, you look at the way they performed last year finishing just outside the top four Frustration that had to come with that. You know, you share a division with the premier program in all of college football. But there's no doubt that they've been there, they've come close. Now they just have to crack their way into that top four at the back end of the year. Right Read into Ray Leo Tula Tele. Ray Leo Tele with the tackle, the sophomore from Anaheim, California. Getting that sack. Constantino. To Logan Green, who watches it roll all the way inside his own tent. Aggies up 34 to nothing. SEC Network Football is presented by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. Death Valley is LSU host Central Michigan. That will be at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Terry Wilson has gone the whole way today, and this is picked off. That's Cooper off the carom, and he's at the 20-yard line. Well, we've called his name quite a bit today. First takeaway, though, for him, the guy that they've got really high hopes for in the defense from his linebacker spot. Great pursuit. The ball just gets tipped up in the air. Look at Cooper right there. Gift wrap. Man, that ball was just floating right in front of him. He picks it and tries to get up field. A long afternoon for Terry Wilson on the Lobo offense. It's just to be expected. I mean, we're talking about one of the better defenses that you're going to see in all of college football is out is still out there behind virtually all new faces along the offensive line. And off to crown over, tripped up in the backfield. Lobo's playing hard. Matthias Bertram on the tackle. And Coach Gonzalez's defense only plays about 16 players on defense. That's the one thing that he needs more than anything is depth. It's been a tough day for Terry Wilson. Yeah, he's been harassed most of the day. Couldn't really get the ground game going. That's something that last week they thought maybe there would be opportunity. Underneath throw at the 20-yard line. We'll set up a third and 10 as Muhammad makes another catch. It's his third of the day. Saw an AM over in Arlington next Saturday at 3.30, the first of seven consecutive conference games for the Aggies, and they play those seven SEC games over the course of eight weeks. Only one open week during that time. Calzada takes the pressure and throws in front of Demas. Fourth down. It's the concern, you know, when you've got your now starting quarterback in there with largely backups and they just bust at left guard. So watch Josh Bankhead. He's working inside and allows Deion Hunter to run right down the middle of the offensive front. It's another free shot of Calzada. His jersey, he's got grass stains all over that thing. He's got popped quite a few times. Time out. Texas A&M, their first. Here's Coach Gonzalez. It will be 30 seconds. LSU Central Michigan tonight on SEC Network. That's going to be a tough game for the Tigers. You would think based off of the way they played so far this season, Stench. There's Kayshawn Butte, who's been outstanding, but the rest of that LSU team has struggled losing to UCLA. And they didn't look necessarily 
like a complete product next last Saturday night either. Nah, it's one of those things where you're coming into the season and you're saying, you know, can somebody establish themselves as the lead tailback, a guy that they can trust, you know, that's been established. And then can you kind of diversify your targets in the passing game? I don't know. That have been the case so far. Keisha Butte leading the country with five touchdown oh, catches. Bad snap, and Caden Davis doesn't really have an opportunity to get a real chance at his first kick. Constantino couldn't field it, and New Mexico will get it back with 7.27 to go. Expect a dogfight in Lexington there today. On the left of your screen just a second ago, as Dumas gets the carry, was the new head coach, Danny Gonzalez. He is the pupil, pupil and his mentor, Rocky Long, is on the right. Rocky is now the defensive coordinator, but Rocky's also stench the winningest coach in the history of Lobo football, as he was the head coach for 11 years. And when Gonzalez agreed to leave Arizona State as the defensive coordinator there to take this job, he insisted that Rocky come with him. As Dumas will be a yard shy of the first down. It was contention, it almost sounded like. Hey, yeah, okay, fine, coach. I'll take the job. I gotta have a D coordinator. I think I know a guy who can do it. Rocky Long back, maybe where he belongs. He did a great job. He's at San Diego State. Hey, he won 81 games over nine years at State. So he was tired of being a head coach. Just wanted to be a defensive coordinator again. School record 65 wins when he was the head coach of the Lobos. Now calling the plays on defense. Manny Logan Green gets the first down past the 30 yard line. I, I loved head coach Danny Gonzalez's story that he told us when New Mexico called him two years ago and said, we'd like to know if you're interested in taking the job. And he said, okay, I'll get back to you. And he calls Rocky Long and says, coach, what do you think? And coach was, um, let's just say a little animated with Danny, hung up on him and said, when your alma mater calls, you take the job. <laughs> Alyssa, I know that uh, you were listening in on that conversation too. That was that was great stuff about how Danny Gonzalez was given a talking to by Rocky. Yeah, I just loved when you followed up with Rocky uh, in our Zoom call a few minutes later, and you were like, "Yeah, I kind of heard you ripped Coach a little bit." He was like, "Yeah, which time? <laughs> when did I do that?" They have a great relationship, and you got to give Danny a lot of credit. They had a 14-game losing streak. Their four-game winning streak is going to end today. But he has certainly turned this program around. Second and four, straight ahead to the 35. Let's see what's going on in Lexington, Peter. All right, a studio update. We're just talking about it. Kentucky trying to hold off the box. Tyrell Ajan. Catches it on the 95-yard line, 90, 85, going to 70. Looking like a good about 52-yard wedge from Taylor Zarzer there. All the way back to the house, Kentucky takes the lead, 28 to 16, extends it. A little bit of breathing room now. Timeout, Texas A&M, their second. It will be 30 seconds. So what's your weight would have been on your front foot on that 52 yard race? Well, if it's a full, so I don't use that 52. I got a 50 in the I bag. But, yeah. So Burns needs to get his information right. Agent with a pick six there for Kentucky. Meanwhile, Jimbo's about to win his 11th 11 straight game. It's the longest streak in 30 seasons. First 3-0 start that Jimbo has had as the head coach. You see the record against the Lobos. They'll play him again in two years, by the way, and again in six years. They'll come back again in 2027. Well, you know, well, a strong start. Something they haven't done in a long time. Haven't had a shutout in five years. Defense, that's why they call that timeout so urgently. They're trying to preserve the shutout here. Weiss on, first down. What do you think? Obviously, the Alabama game is the one that everyone will circle. They'll be here in College Station in a couple of weeks as we try to beat them on October the 9th. Cole with some daylight past midfield. He 
he's off to a heck of a start, isn't he? The starting quarterback of the Crimson Tide. That'll be the toughest challenge, of course, for Texas A&M, but there certainly will be a few others. Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, look, don't get ahead of yourself. You got wood to chop before you get to October 9th. You got see if that would have been the matchup you could fast forward to, but all eyes on next Saturday in Jerry's world and for obvious reasons. Think about last week, the takeaways from it, a near miss versus Colorado, but also what the Razorbacks did to the Longhorns. I'm sure Aggies were excited about that, and at the same time, or to the Razorbacks that I think most gave them credit for coming into the year. And, and let me just say this, if they do win those next two games and the FBI is right, if you want to see one of the greatest environments you've ever seen at a sporting event, come here for that Alabama game on October the 9th. Open field tackle by Tyreek Chappelle on Bobby Cole. Trigger that time by Chappelle. I just finished the play. It was a brutal looking hit. Clean hit. Come up. Nice trigger. I just Texas finished. Texas A&M number seven is now wearing 86. <laughs> just so everybody knows, <laughs> Moose Muhammad, who's number seven, is going to wear number 86 for this punt return. Have we mentioned that? Is that I keep that going if I'm him. Give him a lot more. TV time. A kick away from number 86. And now Wayne Winkler will come back in just a moment and tell you that Moose once again is switching numbers. So he will take off that 86. First, he's got to survive the jersey switch, which looks like a just like a survivor game or something. Watch this. He is going to sleep well tonight. Just fight it. Fight it, man. Oh, it sounds like the jersey's getting a little bit looser. Texas A&M number 89 is now wearing seven. <laughs> Actually, when you think about it, he's wearing seven the whole time. Yeah, he is. That's true. Clark Kent. What a day to make his debut and get his first career touchdown. Blake Boast in the quarterback, in, in a quarterback, the former walk-on, hands it straight ahead to L.J. Johnson Jr. Up to the 30-yard line. Boast of freshman so walk on he chose A&M over scholarship offers from Arkansas State Lamar and a few others his brother Austin plays on the baseball team he's now the backup to Calzado these next few weeks if anything else happens Eli Stovers who moved to tight end would also serve as the third string quarterback If you're AM, you know, you've got to keep an eye on the injury report now, right? That's probably the most interesting element of this game. As you see now, another Aggie banged up. It's Galen Gallagher. Yeah. You see Blake Trainer, 53, subbing back in there. Of course, Trainer got the start here today. It was Layden Robinson, the usual starter. Right guard was out, so that's the Kenyon Green in. High load. Rolled up on the back of your legs, and then you get a DV coming in taking a free shot at you. That would certainly make the, uh, the motivation real. You see him work his way off. And a lot of times you see those braces on the line, that's why they're wearing them. Such a little 300 pounder out of Orange Grove. You see him walk off the field, not putting too much weight on the trainer. Finally gets a chance to get out there and play, and then that happens in his last season of college football. Hope he gets another chance to get on this Kyle Field again. Boast with another handoff. This one going to Amari Daniels, another true freshman. This one from Miami, and that'll help run the clock out. Do so you think like Anaya Smith leaves this game? Still not clear as to what his status is. Isaiah Spiller left a couple of times. Seems like he's okay. You know, A chain left the game, kind of limped off the field at one point. Didn't 
can see a lot of Miles Jones defensively. A lot of question marks as far as who's healthy and who's not coming out of this contest. Daniels changing direction. Up to the 49-yard line. That burst. Pickup of 13 for the true freshman. Most wants another play. They could run the clock out if they want, but he wants one more. And he'll get it. Another handoff with Daniels going past midfield. Jimbo Fisher wins his 11th consecutive game. It's the longest streak for the Aggies since 1992. And it's the first shutout for them in five years. He's got to be pleased. Defense played well, built on that second half performance versus Colorado a week ago. A couple of runs up the gut, otherwise a clean game. There's plenty to coach for. And from this film offensively, this team's got to get healthy. We need to get healthy quickly, knowing they've got a West Division opponent coming up in Arkansas. Let's see what Jimbo has to say about it. He's with Alyssa. Coach, Zach Calzada with his first start. You guys get the win. How would you evaluate his performance? I think he played solid. I think our defense was outstanding. I thought Zach was solid in the game. Made a critical mistake over here he didn't need to make. Uh, but managed the game OK. Uh, we got to block better. At the end of the day, our defense is outstanding. Had uh, two major missed kickoffs, had a bad snap. Uh, offensively, didn't block people very well. Uh, had some drops by key guys. Some young receivers come in and did a good job. Moose did a really good job. Happy with him. 28 and 6 are good players. Our young backs are good, but we got to play, but we got to become a better team. We're very average right now. What does it do for the confidence of this team pitching a shutout by your defense? Well, I think anytime you get a comp, those are hard, man. I don't care what you do to get zeros. That's an outstanding job for our defense in that respect. When you look ahead to next week, you got Arkansas. Early thoughts on that matchup? Oh, yeah, we're going to be a lot in that match. We're going to have to get a heck of a lot better this week and fix these issues. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Candid commentary from Jimbo Fisher after this performance today, 34-0. Thanks to Tom Schofield, Dennis Lanius, Kevin Maloney, Russ Moore, our entire staff. For Alyssa Lang and Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Let's go back to our studios in Peter Burns.